Hello, and welcome to Creative Photoshop. My name is John Ruder. Today we're going to be exploring some different uses of the History Palette. Many of us know the History Palette is a great way to track our movements within Photoshop and to get us back on the right track if we tend to stray off of the, the right path with our image. But it could also be a great way to retouch an image by painting in from various states of blurred and sharpness and also changing the emphasis and focus or depth of field of our image. So let's begin. First we want to have a look at our preferences within Photoshop. Let's go to General and just check out where your history states are. By default Photoshop sets this to 20. I generally set mine to around 60 on my system given the amount of RAM that I have in my computer. You can set it much higher but just remember that you're going to be paying a pretty big memory penalty if you do. Also let's have a look at our options on the history palette itself. By default Photoshop selects automatically create first snapshot when opening. We definitely want that. We also probably will select automatically create new snapshot when saving. Allowing nonlinear history will allow us to select different spots in our history palette and not delete the states that are not selected. And most importantly for our exercise today, we want to show new snapshot dialog by default. This will allow us to be able to engage the snapshot titling dialog box when we click on the snapshot icon at the bottom of the history palette. So to begin, we're going to create several states of history to be able to paint from. We're going to go to our filter menu first and down to Gaussian Blur. And to begin we're going to select a three pixel range. And if you notice as we do the preview, we get a pretty good amount of softness there. So we'll say OK to that. And then I'm going to take that history state and actually turn it into a snapshot by going down to the snapshot icon at the bottom of the history palette, clicking on it, and then being able to name it. Let's call it GB3 for Gaussian Blur 3. And we'll say OK. We're going to return to the original state in the history palette. Once again, go up to the filter menu to Blur, Gaussian Blur. And this time we're going to select a 12 pixel radius. Quite blurry as you can see from the preview, but it's going to be great when we do our background. Once again, we're going to turn it into a snapshot. And we're going to title this one GB12. Let's say OK. And return once more to our original state at the top of the history palette. And this time we're going to go to the Sharpen filter to Unsharp Mask and get our preview up. And we want a fairly aggressive sharpness here, probably much more than we would do if we were going to sharpen the entire image. Keep in mind we're just going to be painting in some of this sharpness in a certain area. So I'm going to go about 100% at 3 pixels. And as we did before, we're going to turn this into a snapshot and we're going to title it USM for Unsharp Mask. Let's have a look at our states our original state, our Gaussian Blur 3, Gaussian Blur 12, and our Unsharp Mask state. So now, to begin painting in from the various states, we want to select on our original history state in the snapshot that opened, select our history brush itself, and we're actually going to need to zoom in on this so we can see the effects a little bit better. I'm then taking my history icon and putting it onto Gaussian Blur 3, and going back to the history brush. And normally I would actually paint this in at a far lower opacity, but for purposes of the small screen for this demo, I'm going to leave it at 100%. Hope that you can see it, particularly on an iPod. So I'm painting in the softness now, and the idea here is to sort of soften the texture of the pores and the fine hairs on the face that were picked up by the studio lighting. We want to sort of minimize that. So I'm just painting around and all the areas where I see some texture. Let's go down to the neck area. I'm going to enlarge my brush a little bit. And we'll finish the shoulders and the chest a little bit later when we work on the bottom of the image. Now we want to move on and add some sharpness. So I'm going to move my history icon to the unsharp mask history snapshot. 
and let's zoom in so we can get a better view. I'm going to select the history brush once again and get a much smaller brush. I'm using the left bracket to scale down my brush size. And again, we're painting at 100% at a much higher rate than I would on a full size image. Again, this is for purposes of our preview. And I'm just painting around on the eyelashes. Let's move over to the other side. Essentially, what the Unsharp mask does is it adds contrast to the pixels that are defined along an edge depending on the settings that you select. So we'll finish up on the eyelid. We'll move over and you can see that we've pretty much brought out quite a bit of the sharpness in those areas there. Now I'm going back to the Gaussian Blur 3 history state just to sort of offset some of those and smooth out the areas alongside the eyelashes. Very often a combination of sharpness in one area and then softness in another area will really make those sharper areas really jump out. And we'll just move around and get a couple areas that I missed before. And keep in mind if you want to go back and undo some of these areas you can always reference your original history snapshot to bring those areas back to where they were originally. I've often had people ask, you know, can't you do this with layers? And the answer is, yes, you probably could, but you could never do it in such an interactive way uh, without having to do multiple layer masks on multiple layers. So let's zoom out of our image now. And we're going to affect the background. So let's go to our Gaussian Blur 12 history state. And we're going to get a large brush. And I'm going to start working on the background to blur it quite significantly. This will give us the appearance of a greatly reduced depth of field, either by shooting at a much wider open aperture, or the effects you can get with a view camera by throwing out your rear standard either with a swing or a tilt. I'm going to finish up the background down along the edges. Now I'm going to come into the bottom of the image and greatly soften the arms. Now this would be a technique that you would see with a view camera where parts of the image, such as the face and the eyes, are in focus, and a plane that normally should be in focus by virtue of your depth of field gets quite a bit softer by throwing out your rear standard. So this technique is kind of great for mimicking that look. Now I'm going around the image, softening certain areas. We want to stay consistent. And then I'm going to go back to the Gaussian Blur 3 and finish off the areas of the neck and the shoulders that I began before so we get a gradual flow from the focus being in focus to the gradual and then finally significant lack of focus at the bottom of the arms. Once again, if there's any areas that I've gone too far with, I can always return to my original state of the image and put the history icon there and actually paint back from that. So now we're going to make a final snapshot of where we are. I'm going to call it final. And let's just go back to the top of our image and look at our various history states. Let's zoom in. And I'm going to click first on our original snapshot, where we began, and our final snapshot, which shows the background quite a bit softer and areas of the face softened and sharpened. So back and forth, original to soft. So you can see that the history palette is not only a great way to see where you've been in Photoshop, but also an excellent way to control the emphasis and the focus of your image. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Creative Photoshop, and I invite you to look into my website at www.johnruder.com to see examples of my work and also the workshops that I teach in Photoshop around the country. Thanks for listening in. We'll see you next time.